The Elements of Logic. This one is by Barker, and it's published by McGraw-Hill. And let's take a look at it in this video. It's got a very interesting cover. And I don't know if um, this is available with a dust jacket or if it just came like this. I'm assuming it did. It's an older book. Let's open it up and take a look. The Elements of Logic. Stephen F. Barker, Department of Philosophy, the John Hopkins University, published by the McGraw-Hill Book Company. Wow, it smells, I gotta smell this, I'm sorry. Just, oh, it smells so good. Look at the copyright, 1965. It's like a piece of history. Here's the, the preface, let's see what this says. Let me zoom in here so we can get a better look. This book is intended both for the individual reader who wishes to become acquainted with logic and for use as a textbook in courses in elementary logic at the undergraduate level. It aims to combine practical ideas useful for the criticism of reasoning, technical ideas of modern symbolic logic, and philosophical notions relevant to logic. When people ask me what I was working on, I would answer that, among other things, I was writing a textbook on elementary logic. What? Another textbook on logic, they would reply. Aren't there more than enough of those already? And, and this is an argument I always make, like, you know, if it was already McDonald's, so why sell burgers anywhere else, right? So it's kind of a, a, a silly argument. This response is not soothing to an author's feelings, but it does have its point. It does have a point in some sense, but, you know, if, if progress started once someone did one thing, then you wouldn't have improvements, you know? Um, so, yeah. Let's take a look at the contents here. So here's the introduction. Logic and philosophy. The traditional logic of categorical sentences. There's some more topics so you can look. The logic of truth functions. And I don't have that many books on logic. I have a few. Quantification. Um, I've taken a course on logic and proof where logic was studied extensively, actually. Um, fallacies. Inductive reasoning. Applications. It's important to have a strong grasp on logic and on quantifiers and on negating statements. That really helps you uh, understand how to write proofs, how to disprove things. Um, it's very, very important to have a strong command of the basic things in logic so that you can write mathematical proofs. Logic and philosophy, this is the introduction. Let's, let's just take a look at this. Most courses in the curriculum of the university today are relatively new ones and were not taught in the universities of a few generations ago. That, that's true, and that's even true today. Um, I mean, the courses that are taught today in college are very different in content than the ones that were taught several years ago. I mean, there are similarities, but if you look at new books and you compare them to old books, there are differences. Logic is an exception for courses in logic have been offered to students ever since the first universities came into existence some eight or nine hundred years ago. Why is this? What is there about logic that for so many centuries has made men regarded as deserving to be a part of higher education? The reasons are at least twofold, because logic, the critical study of reasoning, is a subject having both theoretical interest and practical utility. Cool. So this is the intro. Talks about arguments. Let's go to the next. Let's skip the intro, see what else we have. What's after the intro? Two, the traditional logic of categorical sentences. In this chapter, we shall consider the traditional logic of categorical sentences, a part of logic that stems from Aristotle. This part of logic deals with arguments whose premises and conclusions all can be expressed as sentences of the kind called categorical. This was the aspect of logic mainly studied by logicians of medieval and early modern times, and they came to regard it as the principal part, perhaps even as the whole of logic. And here we have some categorical sentences. So it is a book on logic. It is, the be is it the best book on logic? Uh, I would say no. Here's some exercises. I would just say that it's an old book on logic. And as a collector of math books, um, it's one that I have, right? Let's look at this exercise here. It says, state in each case how the conclusion is related to the premise, converse, obverse, etc., and indicate whether the argument is valid 
making clear any existential presupp presuppositions that may be required. Now, I don't think that this book, um, I don't believe, I don't believe it has answers. So that is that is kind of a problem. Let me just look in the back here. I don't I don't think it's got an index, which is useful if you're using it as a reference. Yeah, it doesn't have answers. It's got a glossary, which is useful as well. And I just got to give it a whiff here. I'm sorry. It's just like it's incredible. It smells like it smells a little musty. It does smell a little musty, but it kind of does smell like an old comic book. 1965, right? Such a piece of history. So it's a book on logic. I know that um, a lot of times people want to learn logic and philosophy. This one's kind of cool because it's written by a person who uh, has a philosophy degree. So yeah. I don't know if this is available. It might have been reprinted. Um, I'm not really sure. I'll look for it and if I can find it, I will leave a link in the description of this video. Oh, check this out. I just saw something here that's important. We've got some set inclusions there. I missed it. There was something, uh, yeah, there was some quantifiers and stuff. I uh, lost it. But yeah, here's some, some logic stuff. So you do stuff like this in courses in logic. You know, you do problems with truth tables and you learn how to manipulate uh, quantifiers and statements and negate things. And that's really where the value comes from in logic. Um, you just need a strong command of the basic things. Yeah. Explain the justification of each legitimate step. If any step is illegitimate, explain why and consider whether the deduction could be rearranged so as to demonstrate the same result legitimately. Cool. Yeah. Inductive generalization. Give it another whiff here. Um, should everyone know logic? I don't know. I guess if you're going to study math, you should have some, again, some logic background. Uh, and the prereq for logic, by the way, is, is just knowing how to read. Um, as long as you can read, you can learn mathematical logic. Yeah. I don't have a course on logic, but I have other math courses on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. Check it out. My courses are actually on Udemy, but if you get them, please use the links from my website as I've lowered the prices and it helps me greatly. Also, if you want to subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Um, wow, this is bringing back some memories here. Look at this. If you've taken a course in logic, uh, what did you think about it? Was it easy? Was it hard? Many computer science students learn logic for the first time in a discrete math course. That's a place that uh, you might see logic for the first time. If like, you're going to college for computer science, you'll learn it there. If you are going to college for math, you'll take it like in a, you'll learn it in like a proof writing course. So yeah. Anyways, I hope it has been helpful. And as always, keep doing mathematics. Until next time, take care.